Hi Chami, welcome to the very last episode of Meet Me in My Corner Season 1. I am Dr. K and I'm your host. So it's actually crazy that this is the very last episode of the season. I was sharing this with um, a neighbor of mine and she was shocked. She was like, what? You guys have seasons and podcasts and like, is there like a theme? And yes, guys, we have to have seasons. You need to have seasons of rest. This is what allows you to recalibrate, to go back to the drawing board and ensure that you're giving out good work. If you keep pushing yourself when you're really tired, I know it's just not going to be as great as I want it to be. And in terms of the theme, it's so cool how God will always put you back onto your journey. So I knew that I wanted to use um, the podcast to, you know, be vulnerable and to find home in myself. And I guess that was the overarching theme for the first season. And I did, you know, accomplish that by pushing you to be vulnerable, by, you know, um, imploring you to think about people pleasing and how it really shouldn't have a space in your life anymore. I have implored you to think about the type of people that you have in your life, um, whether it's your partner or your friends, um, your jealousy, you know, what does it mean for you and how you should work with that. Your inner critic, we've spoken about discipline. We've spoken about how to empower yourself. And for girls who look like me, we've spoken about what it means to be a dark skinned woman and honestly and truly looking at that, you know, um, in a deeper sense. So I really thought the next topic would actually also be quite relevant to this conversation. But first, I'm going to read a quote to you and then we're going to get into it. So it says that we achieve inner health only through forgiveness. The forgiveness not only of others, but also of ourselves. So yes, we're speaking about forgiving yourself or self-forgiveness. Forgiveness in general is a difficult thing to do. I think a lot of us believe that the longer we hold on to the hurt or the anger, it will justify the amount of pain that we were forced to feel or that was inflicted on us, whether it was by another person or by ourselves. And there's a myriad of reasons why you'd need to forgive yourself. You could need to forgive yourself maybe because you didn't complete your studies when you were very capable of doing so, or for staying in a loveless or a relationship that wasn't really conducive for your greater good um, and you ignored red flags that were pretty obvious. You could need forgiveness for yourself because you couldn't kick a habit and now you have to deal with the life, um, lifelong you know, complications or repercussions, permanent repercussions of that. Or you could need to forgive yourself because you couldn't put aside your ego and that meant that you lost a relationship or you lost an opportunity. Whatever it is, we have all had events in our lives, whether they're big or small, that have put us in a corner where we've been hypercritical of ourselves, felt a lot of shame, felt a lot of guilt and required self-forgiveness for us to get to a place where we feel healthy and more secure with who we are and feel more secure with being with ourselves because remember you'll never spend more time with anyone else you'll always spend all your time with yourself so that time that you spend with yourself needs to be comfortable can't be avoidant you know um yeah so here we believe in vulnerability And you are in my corner. So for the very last time in the season, I'm going to share a very intimate um, part of my life that required a lot of forgiveness from me and really pushed me, truly, truly pushed me. So I had a friend in high school. Her and I um, used to get along throughout high school at different points. We weren't as close, but we were close friends, but we truly, truly became very close in matric. Um, That's when I think our friendship started to really bloom or to blossom, but it came into full bloom once we were in varsity and specifically first year of varsity, which is still till this day, the best year I've ever had. 
I am sorry to my daughter, but that year, guys, I cannot describe it. I was so happy. There was nothing that could could contend with my happiness. Yes, there were some speed bumps. Yes, there were times where they were really, really low, but the highs were very high. They were very, very high. I felt independent. There was a sense of freedom and all of that. Okay. So we chose to go to the same varsity. It wasn't a shared decision. We just found ourselves there. And because we had this heritage of being from the same school, we banded together um, and we banded together with another friend. And from there, because she was so charismatic, such a wonderful person to be around, she really drew a lot of people to us. And we created a good and a cool friendship circle or friendship group. We even had a name. It was quite funny. Um, We didn't give ourselves that name, though. Um, So I'll never allow people to tell me that that is the true history of us. No, somebody decided to name us that name. But whatever, we took it and it was fun. I had a great sense of belonging and I think that's why I really enjoyed that year. We had so much fun. We had so many shared experiences. We were naughty. We were just living life, being girls. We were girls. We were girls, just girls, right? But what comes with just being girls is boys as well. And there were situations where um, there were issues in the friendship circle because of boys. It was never between her and I. Until it did come a time where we did have a situation. And I um, wasn't completely um, innocent in the whole situation. I need to put it out there. Um, But it did lead, our situation did lead to a betrayal. And it was her betraying me. And I was just not happy with the whole situation. I was very angry. And I was angry for a very long time. Um... And she was very remorseful. Um, It took some time for her to take accountability, but I did see that she did value the friendship. You know, she just found herself in a situation where she was selfish and it could have been anyone, to be quite honest with you. And it's just that now that I'm older, I understand that better and I'm willing to show her grace. Um, But yeah, but... I didn't care. Like the remorse didn't mean anything to me because at that time I really believed that being angry would justify the amount of hurt that I felt because of the betrayal. And I was in a lot of pain during that time um, because it was a double betrayal, you know, and it was just so much. It was just so confusing. I was too damn young to go through that. It was just so confusing. I just didn't feel safe. I didn't feel secure. Um, I really felt lost and a lot was also happening, um, in my personal life in terms of like, uh, my family. And I think it just didn't add, it didn't, it didn't fare well. Um, but yeah, we definitely had a break in our friendship because of that situation. And there was a time where our mutual friend brought us together to have a conversation and we did have a conversation and we did get to a point where we said, you know, we'd be cordial, we'd be fine. But I was adamant that we could never be friends again because I just felt like what had happened or what had transpired was unforgivable. I don't know why I thought that, but I did believe that, you know. Um, So I went on with my way and I don't know why I thought this was correct, but I didn't want anybody to have to pick and choose. So I literally just removed myself from the situation. And um, it was easier to do so in a sense because I was at a different campus altogether. Um, So I lived in this little bubble, but I did create another friendship that was quite close that really made me feel good. And I'm very thankful to that person for being there for me during that time because they really did play a big part because I felt so lost, you know, but anyway, um, I think about close to a year passes, um, where I'm now, you know, in a rhythm where I have completely removed myself from that situation. And I'm sorry, but the details are kind of hard for me right now. And I think it's because, I got to a point where I was very hurt by this whole situation and I was obsessed with the details that I had to start healing and I've let go of a lot of the details. But I think a year did pass, if I'm not mistaken, um, or close to a year or a few months, 
No, maybe it was a few months, actually. But I think back then, a few months felt like a very long time. Um, we did actually go to a party. Well, we were at the same party. We didn't go there together. Okay, so we we didn't we weren't talking to each other anymore as much, but we weren't completely alienated from each other. Um, but I had a closer relationship with somebody else and she had a closer relationship with our mutual friend. And at this party, it was very random, but my close friend at that time decided to fall asleep and she came to the party, but then her friend, her close friend didn't come to the party. So then it was just her and I, and we had a freaking ball. We were very hilarious, by the way. We were very childish. Um, yeah, yo, we were a mess. We were just so much, we were so spontaneous. Um, when I think about my true fun self, my spontaneity, the level of, um, you know, um, it, fun that I could have, I always think about the times that I shared with her. And when I say that this person was a ball of energy, she was, she was so energetic, so free. So like, come, let's just keep going, you know? And I wish I had that spirit, but I just didn't have it. But that day I just let everything go and we just had fun. And it felt like 2013 again. It felt like that first year of varsity again. And it was just the best time ever. Very random, very, very random, but it was really great. And then I did see her again, um, but we didn't greet each other. And it was very weird and random why we're in the same space. And But yeah, we just didn't greet each other. There was no beef. And I, I, do, I still don't know to this day why we didn't greet each other. And then the next time um, I spoke of her or I heard about her was when um, I learned about her tragic passing. Which was very difficult and I don't know why God has this funny way of doing things of shaking us up but for some odd reason I was then the one who was responsible to let our whole friendship group know that um, it's confirmed that she had passed on Um, so the news fell into my lap it was very confusing I didn't believe it um, because we were young. So why are we passing away when we're young? And I remember once I got that message, I instantly said to myself, no, nothing is happening. And I called our mutual friend. Um, She didn't really know what is happening. And she just explained to me that they had actually had plans the day prior and they were supposed to meet and so forth. But um, something happened and then they couldn't meet and they just thought they'd reschedule to the next day. And she actually really hadn't responded to her messages, but she didn't think much of it because we were young. We do whatever we want to do with our phones. You know, sometimes we respond, sometimes we don't. But she was also very optimistic that nothing has happened. So we just thought it would be fake news. Um, she tried to contact her sister and um, she didn't get through and um, I was a little bit embarrassed and ashamed to contact the family because I felt like you know we had been at at odds for so long I don't have the right to do so I can't do so but I did it Um, I had her mom's number because as I said we were friends even in high school and you know during those times parents expect to have children's numbers and all that stuff so I called her mom I did um and I won't go into the conversation I only share this with people that are very intimate with me um but I called her and it was a bit confusing how she shared the 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 news with me but I'll never forget how she chose to comfort me in that moment um I got off the phone with her And it still did not register. Um, I think even till this day, it still hasn't registered. And I then called um, my friends. And hearing them break down each call, each phone call that I made, hearing each person break down was just so heart-wrenching. And then I got off the phone and I called my mom and I was shattered. I was completely shattered. 
it is still to this day one of the most painful days I have ever had and I've lost people but I can't I can't describe the loss of a young person is just not easy but anyway I call my mom and I'm completely broken and um it's but it's still not registering you know and then we all meet up as friends and we just have like a very a very us time it was so unique to us the way we decided to mourn her on that day it would it just really reflected us um and it was nice it was so nice to be back with them again it was so nice to to be have that familiarity again you know um i felt quite alone and i know i had chosen to be alone because i was still so angry um but it was so great to you know be welcomed and they welcomed me with open arms and it was like nothing had happened and we shared this experience together and we held each other's hands throughout it and yeah then the funeral came and my mom was there throughout um and she was my strength when i say that that woman has held me through my toughest and the darkest times i mean it and during that time was a time i needed her the most and she showed up and she was the only person i was willing to be very vulnerable up to about what i was going through and what my morning looked like then so i felt very guilty very guilty and ashamed to such a degree that i even struggled to pray because i felt dirty i felt guilty that i held on to anger when i had many opportunities where we could have restored our friendship and i could have had those last few moments with her i felt irritated with myself that i was so arrogant to believe that just because we're young that the next few years are promised and are guaranteed and they weren't but she was such a big dreamer you could never have made me believe that that person that brought in so much energy and light into a room would leave this earth i never never ever ever could have imagined it and as i'm actually speaking to you i'm actually looking at um frame picture of the both of us that she actually gifted me on one of our birthdays it sits on my bedside table because it's a huge reminder to me about the importance of really honoring the friendships and the relationships that god blesses you with i haven't completely gotten it right and i'm not going to say i have but it is a reminder so mourning her was very tough because i just felt like i held on to anger for way too long and i missed out on so much but what got me to a place where i then started to feel a little bit better um because i was just crying a lot i was so overwhelmed by the pain you know it's it's weird because for a few months leading up to her death she wasn't a huge part of my life um you know there was a time where she was my day to day she was a daily person or you know she was we had a very 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 close relationship and then we had this break and then you know we separated and i i was just like on my own where i was because i was studying medicine in a very different place and um yeah and she wasn't my day to day every day but when she passed on that morning overwhelmed me her death was it it made up every part of my day from the morning brushing my teeth to eating something to i was just so beside myself i was just crying and crying and crying and crying and crying it was just so much pain i just i didn't even know what to do with the pain i remember I even you saw myself that i don't think i will ever feel anything as painful as this i don't think anything will ever come to this and and i would say to her like i think you've made me stronger now because 
you have shown me what true pain is. Like there's nothing that measures up to this. Like everything that I thought was painful before you, like before this is nothing, you know? Um, even school, your school, I struggled. And that's when my mom started to intervene because it was now reflecting in my grades. Um, because I was just so overwhelmed and we had to have a discussion and I'm so grateful to my mom for having this discussion with me where she had to explain to me that unfortunately this is a part of life where you will make decisions and you will have to live through them or you have to live with them. Because when you're young, you never think that you're going to have repercussions that are long lasting. You think that oh, it'll be a demerit and I'll just move through it. Right. Um, I have a new I have a new a clean slate soon. Right. But death is so final. There is no going back. And she just said to say to me that Katleho, this is the reality of life. You've now been welcomed into life, into reality, where you now have to take account for the things that you do. And you need to realize that certain things will have lasting repercussions. But another thing that she said to me is that death does not absolve people of their mistakes. So, yes, maybe you shouldn't have held on to the hurt for as long as you did because you didn't want to actually have the friendship back. Maybe you should have put your ego aside, but it doesn't change the fact that you were put in that position. And with that, you have to show yourself some sort of compassion. What also helped is that I got that friendship circle back and um, I still have those friends till this day. You know, I don't know if it was because of that shared pain um, that has carried us through, but oh, it, it just felt so great that even like a squabble with a friend, you know, yes, I would be angry for a little bit, but we, we moved past it because then I remembered that mm, I can't go through that again. If I really care about someone, I really want someone in my life. I can't go through that again. Um, and also a, a really wonderful thing that came out of it or that made it easier to then start forgiving myself because I was so ashamed was having access to her family. So I have some sort of relationship with her sister, which has been amazing. Um, she has been there for actually quite big milestones for me. Um, you know, I, I think she came for my baby shower. Yeah, I think she did actually come. It was a drive through baby shower, but I do her makeup. Um, I was supposed to do her wedding makeup and unfortunately I couldn't, um, our times didn't work out. Um, but I wish I was there and, you know, we do have some conversations here and there, which make me feel like I still have a piece of her and I'm so grateful she shares her sister with me. And that kind of like made me feel like, okay, if she was truly angry at me, like after passing, she would never allow her sister to come back to me. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that has been the, the sweeter side of it. Um, and also truly understanding the importance of relationships. Now, with that being said, it doesn't mean that I will allow someone to get away with doing me wrong just because I'm afraid they will pass on. With her, things were very different. And they were different because um, we were young and um, there was a lot of remorse. There was a lot of remorse, you know. Um, but in any case, it was a lesson to be learned. So now I want us to move to the last part of the conversation where we actually speak about um, forgiveness and what that actually could look like, you know. So I was reading on Very Well Mind and they speak about the four R's, um, but this is actually quite a common, um, how can I say, it? teaching, the four R's of self-forgiveness. Um, well, it can also be used for forgiving somebody, right? Um, but the first thing is one responsibility. So responsibility implores you to actually introspect and take accountability for what you've done. You need to take account, right? You need to take stock of what has happened. You need to take stock of your, your, um, what you have done and so forth. 
Um, but even in doing so, you need to be honest with the situation and honest about the situation and show yourself some compassion. Um, so in my situation, as I said before, I was quite young and I was very arrogant, right? I will never take that away. Um, and I thought we had all this time. I really thought in my mind that we would get to like our thirties, which I'm in now, and we would be in different worlds, but we would come together and we would just be us again. Guys, when I say her and I used to have so much, fun, we were crazy. Okay. I think we used to stress the hell out of her parents and her mom, I mean, and her sister, um, definitely used to stress out my mom. Um, We were just crazy. So much fun. Um, But the compassion I do show to myself is that um, I was put in a position where I I felt betrayed and that's why um, I was unhappy and that's why we had the break in the friendship. But um, I now know the importance of forgiveness and I wish I forgave her so that I didn't have to go through a situation of having to forgive myself. But it is also important to understand that, you know, there's no time for regret. So I say that because unless you're something else or someone else, unless you have a gift, we can't really revisit old times. We can't go back in time, right? We don't have that capability. As soon as we have that capability, then we can speak about regret. But um, you will always make the same choice that you've made to bring you here. And that's why I feel like regret is a useless feeling to have as a, an unnecessary torture. Yeah, an unnecessary torture. Because there's no way you can go back in time. And regret says that you should have been able to do something because you should have known better. But if you don't know what you know now, how could you have made a different decision then? If, however, you move on with life knowing what you know and you do make the same mistake and you have um, repercussions, then yes, fine. You can torture yourself with regret. But otherwise, no, don't do it. Okay. And then the next R is remorse. So showing remorse doesn't mean putting yourself through this torture of feeling shameful and guilty because when you feel shame, you tell yourself that you're a bad person. You keep telling yourself that you are incapable of being good, right? Or you're incapable of anybody um, extending grace to you. So you won't extend the grace to yourself. You won't be kind to yourself. You won't treat yourself with the compassion that you require. And instead, what happens is you keep holding on to that guilt And it won't do anything for you. It's not conducive. It will just move you to a situation where you can have things like addiction, depression, and aggression, you know, because you feeling worthless and these feelings are left unresolved, right? Um, So it's important to understand that making mistakes that you feel guilty about does not make you a bad person or undermine your intrinsic value. Okay. And then... um, restoration right so with the remorse must come change behavior and that's how you start to restore either the relationship with yourself or restore whatever you feel needs to be restored or restore another relationship with someone else where you have felt that you've hurt this person right but when you ask for forgiveness from somebody it goes beyond actually having that remorse and showing that you do take accountability it has to be change behavior so you actually making active um, um, active steps to not, um, repeat the past. So with me, it's still shaky here. Um, I'm still like, I still kind of hold on. And I don't know if it's because of my sign, like we're really not as forgiving. Like yo, like we move on, like, ah, uh-uh, it's done, you know? Um, but it is important to, you know, get to a place where if you want to feel restored is by having that change behavior, And then that renewal, obviously, which is the last R, would be a renewed sense of self where after you've had all these drawbacks, where after you've looked at yourself and you've expressed the remorse and you've shown yourself some compassion and you're trying to restore everything, that you move with a a certain restoration of yourself. And you do um, also extend to yourself that, you know what, I can be, a different person. So I don't have to be Katlejo who made that mistake anymore. I can be another Katlejo. Okay. Because I am making the steps. I am being intentional in how I want to move forward. Um, but then 
let's also speak about the importance and the benefits of forgiving yourself. Let's look at mental health. You know, obviously, if you're feeling the shame and the guilt, you're going to feel worthlessness and that could lead to feelings of anger, could lead to feelings of depression and so forth, which is not conducive for you. Right. Um, you need to show yourself compassion um, because you spend a lot of time in your mind. So that place needs to feel quite safe. It needs to feel like a place that you can always find refuge in. Um, but when you are struggling with forgiving yourself and shaming yourself and having building this monster of that inner critic it's going to be quite difficult and that will also lead to you not being as productive not being focused lacking concentration and so forth so it is quite important to have self-compassion and then physical health we all know that your mental health can play a huge role in how your body um, will behave right so there are physiological effects from how we think and the things that we allow to really stress our bodies you know stress can show itself physically it can increase your blood pressure it can put you in a situation where you could have a cardiovascular um, cardiovascular effects right and also um, people who do struggle with feelings of depression and so forth there are behaviors that can come with that that can make you um, unhealthy like maybe you eating too much or you're not eating at all or you physically inactive or you're putting yourself in situations where you want to forget and you're picking up addictions or whatever that can have a physical um, attribute to it or consequence rather and then relationships so you will only realize how terrible you are to yourself when somebody um, gets the effects of of that so the compassion that you struggle to give to yourself, you'll struggle to give to others, right? Which will make it difficult for you to relate to people. So if you struggle to forgive yourself, if you're hypercritical of yourself, if you're very like, very, um, you know, um, hard on yourself and you just won't let things go, it will be extended to other people because um, it doesn't end there. You know, we don't just have these thoughts and it just stops with ourselves we do it to others okay and that's when it'll start becoming quite real and evident to you that oh you're really struggling with this so it is quite important to have that forgiveness for yourself because it will allow you to also relate to people in a different way um and also i mean if you are unhappy with yourself it's very difficult for you to be happy with other people not even just happy for them but happy with them you know and to have those close emotional bonds where people can feel safe with you you need to feel safe with yourself and you need to be able to be vulnerable you know but you can't be vulnerable if you feel very ashamed and guilty and all that stuff so with that, that's quite a great benefit to it. Um, and then um, on this article, they actually even speak about challenges of forgiving yourself. And I think you can read up more on that. But what I wanted to get to you, get you to understand is that we have all been in situations where we have let ourselves down. All of us. Nobody's perfect. Okay. Um, we have all been in situations where we've hurt other people where we have made mistakes that have been detrimental in some way or the other we have done things that have you know put us in situations where we have lasting repercussions okay um but there's no use if you're still living and you're still breathing that you stop your life and you stop having comfort in yourself because you made that mistake if you're willing to be aware of it to willing to take responsibility for it then it will come to the remorse it will come to the change behavior and then you can restore yourself again and you can move on with a renewed sense of self you owe it to yourself as long as you're living and you owe it to those around you to those people that you love which will then ultimately always bring back to yourself as well right um but remember we're trying to find home in ourselves and to be in that cozy corner in your mind or in your life or in your mental. You need to be able to show yourself compassion and grace. And you need to forgive yourself. Okay, that is the last episode of the season. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. It's been, what, 12 weeks? 12 weeks of talking, of engaging, of sharing, of being vulnerable 
and it has done so much for me and I'm grateful that I have this opportunity to share these intimate parts of myself with you and that you've received it so well and yeah I can't wait to see you in the second season where you'll meet me in my corner on a Wednesday again. <laughs>